Oh, hi. How are you? Hi. Thanks for joining me. This is Sophia, the therapist, and I just wanted to hop in for a few minutes today to talk to you about a phrase God just gave me. And that phrase is, pray, but don't stay. And where does that come from? Where does that come from? So, you know, over the years of being a therapist, I've had many couples come in, many people come in who, are had, who have had difficult relationships with um, loved ones, be it romantic relationships, um, sibling, parent, work relationships, friendships, all kinds of stuff. And what I usually tell them is to pray for the person. Pray for the person. But you know, you have to be specific in the way that you pray. Because what we don't want to happen is for you to feel like you're, you know, praying for God to move, praying for an answer, and nothing changes. So, want to re rephrase that and to say, pray for the person, but don't stay with the person. How about that? Pray, but don't stay. Put that in the comments. Pray, but don't stay. Because, you know, God would not have you to be abused. That's not of God. That is demonic. Abuse is demonic. It's a spirit that causes people to be abusive. And it's a demonic spirit that causes people to be abusive. And God would not have you to live with a demonic spirit. No. So if it's your, your parent and you can't leave, like you're a little kid, we understand that. But if you're an adult and you live with a parent that's abusive, leave. Figure out how to live on your own. Ask God to provide a way, a friend, a couch, somewhere, somehow for you to leave and leave. I've had people who I've known who in their 60s and 70s living with abusive parents. Come on now. We don't have to do that. We don't have to tolerate abuse. You can pray for them. Definitely pray for them. And ask God to break that demonic spirit off of them. Bind it. Cast it. Do whatever you know to do, but you don't have to stay. If you're with an abusive spouse or romantic loved one, boyfriend, girlfriend, fiance, whatever, and they're abusive, pray for them, but you don't have to stay for that mess. Don't stay for that mess because it breaks you down. And that's what the devil is all about. He can't kill you, but he wants to kill your spirit steal from you or destroy you and living with somebody who is verbally abusive emotionally abusive or physically abusive financially abusive will break you it'll break you down and break your spirit okay so don't you don't have to do that pray for them but don't stay with them figure out how to get out there's enough information on the internet to help, to help you prepare to leave. But the biggest thing is to just take one step. Do something. Do something while you pray for them. And when I pray, let me tell you what, though. Some of y'all, some of us, some of us, we, we, we don't understand how to pray and the power of prayer and how God operates through prayer. So when somebody tells you to pray, you think that they're just blowing you off. Like, oh, pray about it. They ain't like, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. She's just going to tell me to pray about it. But that's not what I'm talking about. You know, I understand prayer to be the most powerful thing you can do. And it's the way you pray. So see, when I pray for people, what I understand is that a lot of times going through hard times is what builds you up the most in your faith and your walk with God. Sometimes, like they say, people have to hit rock bottom. I'll pray for, for people to hit rock bottom because sometimes that's what it takes. That's what it takes for them to get to their knees to pray and ask God to change your heart. Pray aggressive prayers. One of mine is, Lord, please put your foot on their neck. Let everything they do fail until they come to you and ask, ask you for forgiveness until they repent. Let everything they do fail. 
with everything they touch, let it fail, Lord, until they come to you and ask for forgiveness, repent of their sins, and give their life to you and surrender their will to you. Let everything they do fail. Or oh, by any means necessary. I'll pray by any means necessary. Bring them to you, Lord, by any means necessary. Have them break the devil off of them by any means necessary. And, you know, God uses some tools that we don't understand. We think, oh, you've been afflicted. Oh, you had a car accident. Oh, Lord, have mercy. No, sometimes he's using those things to help you wake up. Help that person wake up and get to their right self in their right mind. You know, God created all of us with a purpose of bringing him glory. But we make choices that take us away from that. So my prayer is help them to make a choice to bring them back. To be in the man that you created them to be. To bring be in the woman you created them to be. And to break that spirit, that demonic spirit, that demonic chokehold, break it off of them by any means necessary. I was watching a YouTube video or something, one of the videos, I don't know what. And this guy um, was young, 17, 16, 17, 18, and out with his friends. And he jumped into a shallow lake from like a bridge and broke his neck, cracked his neck. And so the video that I saw, he was probably about 30. And he said that was the best thing that ever happened to him. He was paralyzed, paralyzed from like the chest down so he could use his arms. But he was married, had a beautiful wife who loved him, in-laws, family who loved him. He had started a business, fully operational as a, a good human being. But it could be, and he said that was the best thing that happened to him because it, it put him on a different road. It changes his focus. And that's what I pray for the people who have come against me, that they be put on a different road and find their purpose. I'm going to tell you what happened to me, said this testimony teaching time. So um, a couple years ago, I had to have surgery. And during the time it was, uh, I was working and somebody else had to take over my job. Well, the person who I was reporting to, my supervisor at the time, I told him I'd be out. Probably a month because I was in the hospital for a week. So the day I got in, got home from the hospital, I got a phone call from the supervisor. And he was a new supervisor. I had only been in the job a couple of months. And he went on to accuse me of not doing my job. He said, I don't know you. You may be... You know, you, you may not be doing any of your job at all because the way you have your file set up, it looks like you're not doing your work. You're not teaching the class. And he's like, well, where's where's this document? It's supposed to be here. I was like, well, look, look under the title for the document. It's there. Well, you're supposed to have it here. And he went on to say, I have reported you to my, my supervisor and told her that I don't think you're doing your job. And, um, and I don't know what's going to happen to you. Like, I've been on this job 18 years and never had a complaint. And you on this job for two months and you think you're going to report me to somebody, get me fired while I am on recuperating from surgery and a week in the hospital. That's what you're going to do. So needless to say, instead of being able to recuperate, the day I got home from the hospital, I got this huge bucket of stress dumped on me. See, that's how the devil gets you. He knows when you're vulnerable. He knows when you're vulnerable. So it went on. And of course, I was worried about it, thinking about it. I was insulted because I've been doing the job for 18 years, longer than he has been in this position or even been at the place where we were. And how dare you? I was insulted. I was hurt. I was offended. I was trying to call the person, the, his supervisor. She wouldn't call me back. Called in the union. I was calling everybody when I should have been resting and recuperating. So my prayer is, Lord, 
I need you to take care of this for me. I need you to take care of him for me. How dare you? And take care of anybody who was working with him. And he did. And this is like, you know, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. And won't he do it? So I know, see, so you say, okay, well, you happy that something bad happened to him. No, but I'm happy that whatever needed to happen, happened so that they could get off of, get out from the demonic stronghold that, was on, that they were under. So fast forward a year, year and a half, and I get a little birdie. Little birdie told me that the person, the supervisor that attacked me and, and abused me when I was sick was going through the same thing with the same boss that he had about to lose his job because he was doing what he was accused me of doing. He wasn't doing his job and she called him. So, you know, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. He will repay and I trust God to do that. That's not something you need to do. All you need to do is pray. Let your will be done, Lord. Vengeance is yours, Lord. I know you will repay. And then you get on about doing what you need to do so that this never happens to you again. Right? And, and again, separate yourself from a, an abusive person by any means necessary. Separate yourself. Because God will not have you to stay under an abusive situation out of your love for them. Now, I'm not saying divorce. What'd I say? What'd you hear me say? Separate. Give God a chance to fix it. So that might mean being separated for a month, a year, five years, 10 years, whatever you hear from God, he might release you from that situation. But we know God hates divorce. God hates divorce. He does not forbid for divorce. And there are some instructions in the Bible if you do divorce. But what I need you to understand is you can pray, but you don't need to stay. All right. Oh, by the way, I did stay and, and kept doing what I've been doing. God changed everything around. The person who was abusive to me as a supervisor is no longer a supervisor. He was fired from a supervisory position, demoted back to what he was, a regular old worker like me. So trust God, believe him. And stay in faith.